Hey guys, Korean Macarena here, and welcome back to my channel. If you want to make this star dream catcher, just keep on watching. So, a few things that you're going to need. This is optional. You can have a stitch marker, but you don't have to. Embroidery floss, or any type of thread, yarn, whatever you want to use. Scissors. I am just measuring my hoop here so you know about roughly what size it is. It's about around 4 inches, roughly, give or take. I do recommend using smaller hoops because this will work out to your benefit in the end. I also use a darning needle. Um, you don't have to. This is completely optional, but it does make it a little bit easier. Um, you can use a straight or a curved end darning needle. And at the end of the video, I do also use a very small darning needle to weave in the ends. So um, just keep that in mind. You can find all those products at... Um, Michael's and probably Joann's and Hobby Lobby. You could, might even be able to find um, it at Walmart. So let's get started. I am going to tie my embroidery floss with a double knot around the hoop and then I'm going to show you how to start the weaving process. So after you get it tied on you're going to want to hold that tight down so it doesn't move around. You could always put some super glue or hot glue or something to keep it from moving around. I just hold it down. You're going to pull very tight when making um, the starting round. Sometimes I forget what I'm saying and I jumble over my words. I'm sorry. So you're going to go over the hoop and up through the loop. And it's going to create this little tiny loop on the hoop. And you're going to pull it, and I'm rhyming, and I don't know why, and I'm sorry if this is hard to understand. So I'm going to show you a couple more times here. So you have your thread tight, and you go over the hoop, and you go behind it and up through. And you do that all the way around. And for this, you're going to need 10 spaces around the, the hoop. And this number is important, so remember, 10 spaces. So just keep doing that all the way around the hoop, and I'll meet you back. Oh, well, here we are. I am doing a voiceover. Sorry. So essentially, this is just the same. We're just doing the same thing as we did before. We're going to go through the thread. Instead of going around the hoop, we're going through the thread, and we're pulling up through. And it's going to create a little tiny loop in the center of that thread. You pull it tight. This is where I like to place the stitch marker so I know where I stop and start. It's just, I mean, you don't have to. I just do it because it's easier for me. And actually, in the video, I uh, don't even realize. So, <laughs> this is why I like to have the stitch markers. <clears throat> so, you're going to do the setup row, which we already did. And then we're going to go once more around. So, we're only doing two rounds of the webbing because we're going to do completely something different. Just make sure you're always pulling tight. So we're going to go around the thread and up through. We're going to pull it up through and we're going to pull it tight to the center. And we're going to do that on each and every single one. As always, if you have any questions, you can find me on Instagram. Um, I'll try and have that link below. I've been away for so long and now I'm back and I'm going to try to post more during catcher videos. I have some plans for the future. So you're going to go all the way around and we're going to meet back when I'm done. And I'm done. Yeah. Magic. Not really, but. So now this round is completely different. So we're going to skip one and we're going to go into the next one. So we're, we're, we're skipping that first stitch. And we're going to go stitch. I'm not crocheting. That first part of the webbing. <laughs> and we're going to go into the second one and pull it down in the center. And we're going to skip the next one and go into the one right after that. So it's kind of like crocheting. You're basically decreasing the stitch. But it's a decrease in the webbing. So you do that all the way around. So you start out with 10 and you skip one in between each and you'll end up with 5. Man, I have been out of the game for so long. I hope this is making sense for you.
sense to you. I, I can't talk English tonight. So just keep skipping one. Remember, you need to have 10, and then we're going to skip one throughout the whole round. You're going to do one, skip one, do one, skip one, and you're going to have five remaining. We're making a star, so obviously you need five points for a star. This is where I mess up. This is where I don't even realize that I have done all of them, and I went all the way around. So after you've done this, you're going to want to mess around with the shape a bit and get it uniform as close as you can with matching sides. It, it doesn't really matter. It's just going to be a little off and a little wonky. Um, just move the loops gently. Try not to do it too hard because you might snap them, especially if you've been doing it tight. I had a little bit of trouble moving mine around, so... You know, I just got this um, gooseneck tripod for Christmas, and I never knew these existed. Um, every time I've recorded a video, I've had the tripod in between my legs, like, sitting there, balancing, and it was always a pain in the butt. And honestly, it was just a chore, and I didn't like doing videos or posting videos because it was just too much to try and record and hold the tripod without it moving and it was just annoying. So now that I have this gooseneck tripod, I'm so happy. I'm so excited. And this is what I use tonight. I mean, it is a little shaky, but it'll do. I'm super excited. And if you don't have one, you need to get one. They're not that expensive at all. And it's literally a life changer. So anyways, I'm rambling back to the tutorial. Um, I would also recommend using embroidery floss like I have said previously in other um, Dreamcatcher tutorials because it is thinner and it's not going to be as bulky when you finish. Um, but you can go ahead if you prefer to use yarn or something else, go right ahead. So now with this, what we're doing is we're putting two knots on each strand. We're putting one at the top and one at the bottom. And we're making sure to pull tight. Remember, a knot at the top and a knot at the bottom. This is what's going to make the star. So you're basically doing the same thing with like how you were doing the webbing. You're going around the thread, pulling up through. But instead of making it tight onto the center, you're pulling straight up and making a knot at the point. And you're doing the same thing for the other point. You're going around the thread up through the loop and pulling tight up to the point. So you do that all the way around. For the orange for this I did about three rounds. So all together I had about six rounds of the orange. Um, but you can continue all the way through. I did end up changing colors. I wasn't playing on it but I did. And I will show you how to color change. Um, but I did do six rounds of the orange. I did four rounds of the blue and I did four rounds of the pink, but I did orange, pink, blue. I don't know why I keep doing orange, blue, pink. Um, but you don't have to change colors. But like I said, if you do want to, I will show you here in a second how to, um, change the colors. It's just two knots. It's not hard at all. <clears throat> Just remember to pull tight and always place a, a knot at the top and a knot at the bottom. And you'll start to see um, the star shape more after you go around a few times doing this method. I think that it reminds me of like the um, the flower dream catcher I did and also kind of the spiral one. Not as much though, I don't think. I haven't made one in so long I don't even remember how to do it honestly. And that's why I like YouTube is because I think of something, I do something, I make a tutorial, I put it on YouTube, I can watch it later. Or somebody else makes something, I can watch it later and recreate it to how I like it, you know. It's always fun. <laughs> 
So now we're going to color change. What I did is I just knotted the pink on itself on the last strand that I used. And I pulled it up tight. And then I'm going to take the last strand, which is orange, and my new strand, which is pink. And I'm going to knot them together and pull it up tight to the last thread work that we had made. Make sure you're pulling it tight. And knotting good because it will move and it will mess up your whole work. Make sure it's where it's supposed to lay. Just get it up there really snug and tight. Pull those um, threads through the center of the star. So the last thread that you used and your new strand that you're using now. And you're just going to continue that work. So you're going to go over the loops and up. And you're going to make one out at the top and one knot at the bottom and you're going to do that all the way around I did four rounds of pink I believe I'm not a hundred percent sure it's just personal preference do as many or as little as you want and if the color change was confusing I am about to do a second color change here in a second um I had so many problems with these little knot things going on sorry about that um so like I said you don't have to change colors you can it's up to you. Whatever rows you do, whatever rows you don't do, it doesn't matter. Um, so here is another color change if I didn't make sense in the first one. So you're going to take your last thread, you're going to snip it. You're going to take your new thread and you're going to do a knot on itself. So you're going to go under the last working thread and you're going to create a little loop and you're going to pull that thread down and it's going to make a little sliding knot. You're going to pull that tight and then you're going to take your last thread which is pink and your new thread which is blue for me and you're going to make a knot on itself. Well a knot together sorry. And then you're going to pull it tight and make sure it's up there snug. Pull those threads through the center and hold tight so it doesn't go anywhere and you're just going to continue doing how we've been doing going around the loops and up through or the around the threads and up through sorry about that. And then you continue all the way until you're finished. And when you're finished, I would obviously recommend stopping at the last space. Um, and then you have these threads. If you color change, if not, you have one. You take a small darning needle and you go up through in between the loops. There is a space in between those threads where you can weave your ends in and you won't be able to see it in the back or the front. You just snip it off. Um, and it's a cute little star catcher, star dream catcher, whatever, star catcher, that's cute. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Please, um, subscribe and share. And, um, also on Instagram, you could always tag me in your makes. I would love to see what color combinations and creations you come up with. Um, Thanks again so much for watching, and I hope that you enjoyed. If you have any questions, don't forget you can DM me on Instagram.